Well, I hope you're ready because today we're bringing you a very, very exciting show. Now, I am particularly excited about today's episode because we're going to put a human face to the definition of the importance of education. It's Absolutely. going to be very, very informative. Very informative. Yep. And, um, you know, I'm excited that we are talking to this man mm -hmm. because I have watched him from afar, you know, yeah. um, in the news and all. Now, mm -hmm. one thing that drew me closer or made me pay more attention to, to what him. he was doing was free education mm -hmm. you know i mean when yeah. free education came it came with a whole lot of confusion for want it. of a better yeah. word around it but the way he was able to break it down make people understand yeah. now i felt like okay so this is somebody who knows so much about yeah. education yeah. and yeah. is helping build yeah. ghana education that's true one day we're here and he decided to <laughs> teach on class arts and I was like oh Once no so teacher, this man won my heart you know <laughs> ladies and gentlemen our guest today is the honorable member of parliament mm -hmm. of Busomche in the Ashanti region and deputy minister of education, education. Dr. Yao Ose Edichu so sama <laughs> Oh, Doctor, Hello. you're welcome. Yes, thank welcome. you, thank you. Truthful interview. Yes, 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 because you have so much one person okay. can <laughs> handle you. I think you've had enough of the one on ones. So. Uh, yeah, first yeah. time ever yeah. getting yeah. two wonderful people mm -hmm. talking to me at the same time. Yeah. Oh, so, so how ten are you? Right and ten left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are surrounded. I'm doing great. I'm mm. doing great. I'm excited to be here. Wow, awesome. we're glad awesome. to have you. How's mm. the grounds looking? Oh, grounds is great. Nice. So much excitement mm. and. Um, I'm enjoying politics. It's good. Awesome. 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 All right. Let's start the interview yeah. now. Let's yeah. get straight yeah. into it now. Fema, you shoot your shot. Because I have this grenade I want to unleash. No, no, no. So, so, so let's start. Let's so, unleash yeah. gradually. <laughs> no, so um, for most of us, we got to know you, you know, in the news and um, not much was really mm. uh, heard about you and mm. then we saw some man in the news mm. talking of free mm. SHS mm. and trying to break down gold track mm. and green, green track. track. It's not mm -hmm. at all so confusing but the teacher mm. that you were, mm. you were yeah. able to break it down and then he decided to wow all of us by picking the, you know, come back to the blackboard to do mm. some teaching. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Where you have you come now. from? <laughs> <laughs> I get that all the time. Where have you been? Yeah. yeah. Um, about the teaching, you know, you called your program Class Act. Yes. Mm -hmm. So my teaching had to be a class act. Yeah. Okay. Because you, you see, you set a high standard for me by the name <laughs> of your teaching program. <laughs> yeah. So and and it, you it nailed it. You nailed it. It had yeah. to be a class act. Yeah. And um, I've, I've taught for many years. Mm -hmm. And... Um, in Ghana, after my sixth form, I did national service mm. and taught for one year. No, let's go. Let's and go way back before the, the beginning. The, 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 oh, the beginning. The, 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 yeah. Beginning. Who are your parents? Who are your oh, siblings? Oh, my mm -hmm. parents. Oh, good. Um, uh, my father has passed on. Okay. Um, he was a cocoa farmer. At where? At Manso Amenfi. There's a village called Antobam. You okay. walk, those days there was no car going. You walk 10 miles to get to the mm. village. Okay. We live in a hamlet, a house by ourselves in the middle of the Huko farm. And that's where I had my formative years. Mm. And before I started school in my native town of Jache in the okay. Ashanti region. Right. Oh, Jache Pramso. Jache Pramso. Okay. Right? Yeah, that's where I had my mm. primary school education, middle school, and then went mm. to the most famous high school in Ghana, Jachi <laughs> Pramsu Senior High School. Mighty, Mighty Japas. Ja <laughs> <laughs> so, what was the name of your primary school, do you remember? Mm -hmm. Jachi Anglican okay. Primary School. Okay, it's still there. Oh, of course. And then nice. I went to Jachi Anglican Middle mm -hmm. School. Okay. But I didn't finish the whole middle school. After Form 3, I passed the common entrance and left. Oh, so you're shot mm -hmm. since since. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and left for Jachi Pramsu Senior High School. And then from there, I went to do my sixth form. Mm. at Kumasi High School. Was your father an educated man? No, he did some night school, uh, so he mm. could read Chi. Okay. But besides that, no, he wasn't, and my mother, likewise, okay. I did not have any education, and there were no books in my house where mm. you, you can just read, and so I took it upon myself to buy my own books when I was a kid. Wow. I used to weave baskets. Mm. I go to the jungle, get my cane and we use in making baskets and I'll go and sell in Kumasi. After huh. I, I'll say we'll get about 20 baskets. I'll put it on there. How old were you then? Yeah. I ran about 12, 13. I was wow. doing my own. Wow. 
So with the baskets, take it to Kumase, sell them. And my first stop was Methodist Book Depot mm. at Emroom in Kumase. Yeah. I'll kill. I'll go there and buy my book. And I remember the first book that I bought from, I bought from there, The Adventures of Yakentinka. <laughs> yeah, never <laughs> you forget remember that, that story? Oh, yeah, yeah, very interesting. Mm. So I was my own librarian and mm. everything, trying to make sure I can have access to books. Of course, from there, you go to the first line and buy yourself some, you know, some books. Wow, you had yeah. siblings? <laughs> yes, yes. Younger yes, yes. or older? Oh, younger and older. Okay. There were eight of us. Wow. And I was kind of in the middle. The fourth one with four behind me and three mm. ahead of me. Were they, the, your older siblings were also in school? And do older you siblings, you see, yeah, they all, my older one mm -hmm. <laughs> went to school when he was about 18. Wow. He didn't get the opportunity, so about 18, he was a Jehovah Witness. And because in the church, everybody was reading, mm. so when he was about 18, he's called Jones uh, of Uriah Malcolm. 18, he decided that he would go to school. And he went to school and graduated from middle school. Wow. But there was no money for him to go to senior high school. Are you also Jehovah Witness? No. Okay. Uh, and then my other sibling, older, the second, couldn't go to school. And my mom tells of the story of how she was going to write her name in school. They went close to the headmaster's uh, uh, house. And somehow my mom, my mom changed her mind that, oh, oh. you're a girl. Oh. <laughs> So she didn't go to school. Mm. And then the one after her went to school, and then the rest of us. And when we say school, we mean middle school. We're not talking about high school, because mm. among all of them, uh, there were just two of us who went to high school. Because my dad okay. couldn't afford, he couldn't yeah. afford to take care of two people in high school. Mm. Yeah. So I remember passing the common entrance, the equivalent of B, C. At the time, he needed 40 CDs, so that I'll pay the deposit to go to Jasha Pram. So as a day student. Don't even talk about boredom. Mm. Buying the trunk <laughs> and the clothes, no. No, it won't happen. Yeah, so um, interestingly, he couldn't get the loan for the CDC. He went mm. from village to village in the Antobam wow. area talking to friends. Um, and he couldn't. He was saddened by the fact that I couldn't. And then he, I was not going to be able to go. And then my younger brother, who came directly after me, came up with an idea that saved me and save my education and everything. Sitting here oh. is because of him. What did he do? Yeah, what, what he did was my uncle's hat were rearing some pigs, and he was taking care of it. So they had given him some of the pigs. Okay. And so he just said, why don't we go and sell the pigs? A big one, probably wow. you get the money. And then my dad gave me money, went to Jache. My uncle sold the pig, we got 42 CDs. Hmm. So it was sold on Sunday. Monday, I was paying my deposit at Gachi Pram. So wow. What's the name of that brother? Thomas. Where is he? Uh, he's, he's in Germany and he still has business. He go back and forth. Wow. He, he's done so well. Wow. And so had it not been for him, life would have been different. Wow. We yeah. say thank you to him. Yeah. And then you were in high, um, Kumasi High School. Kumasi High School for sixth form. Yeah. And when I went to Kumasi High, interestingly, those there were complaining that Kumasi High didn't have all the bells and whistles and the beautiful dining halls. And the, we had mm. dining hall, assembly mm. hall, and they were complaining. But to me, Kumasi High was like heaven. Of course. Yeah. Coming from Jasper Prem. <laughs> <laughs> Which year was this? Which year? 1983, 85. Okay. I finished, and then from there I went to tech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did land economy. And yeah, so th you learned economy, mm. and then later on, it so turned to education. To education. education. Yeah. yeah. You see, land economy is an interesting sub uh, course. You do literally almost everything, construction and economics and mathematics. So when I went to the U.S., I realized that taking quite a few courses in mathematics in land mm. economy, so I decided that, okay, um, given all the available opportunities. Of course, I started out as a security guard in the U.S. Mm. Yeah, my first two years, I was a security guard, a wow. watchman. And I remember putting on my security guard clothes for the first time going to work in the U.S. Yeah. I remember the security guard at Lambert Wishing Board. <laughs> I said, oh man, I'm like him now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah. how did it feel, you know, with your education? Yeah, because see, the, the thing was that I was getting paid $4.50 an hour, and that mm. monthly I was making more than being a land economist. Of course, that was good money. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and I was glad that I had a job to do, mm. so I had no regrets. 
Uh, but I also knew that I was not going to stay that way mm -hmm. and that I needed to seriously uh, look at my future. And, and I had a wonderful opportunity of meeting people who guided me as to how I could become a teacher. Mm -hmm. wow. So I became what in the um, US they call a substitute teacher, mm -hmm. which means if the teacher is not there, mm -hmm. you can leave the classroom empty. It's not like, just like here. Mm -hmm. when, when teacher is not there, nobody cares about it's that a holiday. No. In the U.S., you cannot leave a classroom without, without a teacher. A teacher. Wow. So when teachers are sick and they can't come to school, they call you up and say, can you go to this school and work there? Okay. Mm. So I did that for about two years. Wow. And then the government of California decided that high school should be four years and not three. Mm, okay. But they did not have the buildings. Mm -hmm. So they decided that they would do year-round schools which in Ghana is a double track. Okay, yeah. So the whole idea was, okay, we'll make the school day longer, but we're going to make the school days shorter mm. so we can fit three batches of students, two at a time, mm. while the two are there, one will be on vacation. And because of that, they were hiring more teachers, and I got the opportunity to be hired uh, to mm. teach mathematics wow. after I've taken some more math courses uh, at the University of California. But in the U.S., mm -hmm. you also did the new design charter, charter schools. schools. Yeah. Tell us about that. That's yeah, California, it, right? Yeah, California, yeah. Los Angeles. Um, mm. The interesting thing is that one thing I love about Americans is that they don't hold themselves to ransom and say that this is all that we know and therefore it's not going to change. The American public schools were failing them. Mm. Public schools were not doing well. So when public schools are failing, Everybody come and say, no, it has to change. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they wrote, um, a commission wrote a report called A Nation at Risk okay. under President Reagan. A Nation at Risk was saying that our public education system is failing, and if nothing is done, America will lose its competitiveness. So they didn't want America to lose its competitiveness. Yeah. Therefore, they decided that something needed to be done. Right. So the idea was that if you have innovative idea and you believe that you can set up schools that will outperform the public schools, bring your proposal, the federal government will give you about uh, 450,000, close to half a million, mm -hmm. to just begin the process. And once you set the school up, then the government pays you the same amount of money that they will have given to public schools. Mm -hmm. So if public school students were getting about $8,000 a year at the time, so they will just give you the money. Once the students enroll, instead of giving that to the school districts, they will give you that money. Mm -hmm. And out of that pot of money, uh, you use that to pay your teachers, pay your rent if you are renting, pay your mortgage if you have purchased your own building, and run the school. And then every five years, they will evaluate you. Mm -hmm. If your schools are doing well, you are in business. If your schools are not doing well, then they will take away the charter. Wow. Right. So right. I have taught for 10 years at the time, actually mm -hmm. nine into the 10th year, mm -hmm. And I just felt like, if Americans, white guys, can send, write this proposal, I too can. Mm. If I know something, and yeah. I can bring some element of Ghanaian values mm -hmm. to the school and change the culture of the school and get the students to do well. So I wrote the proposal, wrote my first grant, and I was shocked one day I went on the web checking, and I saw my name there. Wow. Mm. And I said to myself, wow, I can't believe it. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Some yeah, so boy from Jachi Pram, so from you know, and then, oh, yeah. And oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Not to play the race card, <laughs> mm -hmm. but on that, did you face any opposition? Oh, no boy. You're coming from? It was tough. Yeah. Tough. Because, you see, after I got the money, then I had to go through a public hearing process mm. to get the city to approve the charter. I was live on TV defending Wow. Uh, wow. why I want to set up a school. Mm. Yeah. And, and in their mind, certain day, they were thinking, who the hell are you? Exactly, <laughs> who does it take yeah. years? And then you want to tell us. That can what do to do? And I was the first African to do that in the US. Yeah. Well, looking at you and saying, who the heck is and, that and guy? And you proposed some new stuff oh, yeah, as well. Of course, yeah, because yeah. I, I proposed a school system where we have career pathways. Mm -hmm. We were doing a school from primary six all the way to high school. Seven okay. years. Mm -hmm. And we propose that the students will come to school on Saturdays. Okay. Wow. So that they have extra time to study. We propose that they wear uniforms. And those days, uniform was not common. Mm -hmm. uh, we propose that we have a longer school year. And we also said every student that comes to us will have to do biology, chemistry, and physics, mm -hmm. which was also not common. 
And then the one thing that got their attention was that every student would take classes in engineering. Okay. I don't know what went through my head, but I felt like engineering um, was the foundation of any society, and therefore I needed American children to study engineering. We <laughs> partnered with um, a community college, two-year college, and in America, the law allows them to offer courses to high school students, even though they haven't graduated from high school, they mm. can still do college courses. So every student in my school was required, as part of our graduation requirement, to enroll in engineering course and they offered the course the college courses on my campuses mm. you know so you, when you got to america you mm. were a security yes. guard mm -hmm. what happened you know just quickly mm. tell us mm. what yeah. happened mm. between the mm. time you were a security guard and, and the time you were making all these educational reforms for united states of america, america. what happened yeah. in well, between you see the thing was this i remember going to get my driver's license mm -hmm. and i was writing the exam and i lifted up my head and saw some guys sitting there he looked ghanaian to me and then he waited till I finished the exams. And then he said, are you from Ghana? I said, yeah. He said, which school did you go to? I said, tech. And he said, oh, I also went there. And he said, well, you know what? I'm a college professor. I've just been sent to Redwoods to go and teach at the university. Mm -hmm. So he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm a security guy. I said, oh, but I can become a teacher. And then he said, oh. And he showed me the test that I needed to take. So yeah. I went to church the next Sunday and talked to some of the church elders. At the Church of Pentecost. Okay. Mm. It had just started there. And um, one, um, now he's a pastor, Otu, and one, Asante, who has passed on. Both of them said, okay, we'll help you register for the test. So Otu gave me a check, Asante okay. gave me money to go and buy the prep book. Wow. And then I went and sat for the sea best. And the math, I almost got a perfect score. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. I well, you had it already. Oh, yeah, so yeah, so yeah. I almost yeah. got a perfect score. <laughs> and we, le so we learned the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, that is how I began, and then mm. they showed me. And that's one of the benefits of what Ghanaian Churches Abroad has done for Ghanaian immigrants. Oh, okay. People don't know that they are the stabilizing force and influence, mm. that I happen to go to a Ghanaian church, and because we are all immigrants, they find ways to help, help you out. You. Wow. I remember going there with housing challenges, and Church of Pentecost elders came together, they oh. got me a place to stay. Are you very religious? Uh, yes, I'm religious. Okay. Uh, but I don't wear it on my sleeve. I mean, you don't need to. <laughs> As Americans, we say. Yeah, you don't need to. I mean, yeah. So, so the bottom line is that um, the churches, Ghanaian churches that have started abroad, really facilitated the integration of Ghanaians mm. into the American society. The pastor became your guidance and counseling person. Yeah. Who should you? You can go here. Hey, do you do have your green card. If you don't have it, We'll get a lawyer for you, mm. we'll do this for you. So long story short, once we took on, I took on that uh, opportunity of becoming a substitute teacher, mm. that is what transitioned me into a full-time uh, teaching. Substitutes were just being there uh, for two days, three days, and then you move on. Remember mm. going to one school, American kids are terrible. <laughs> so, so I went to one school and the teacher had left a note that, yeah. uh, be careful about Johnny, he's a bad kid. Wow. I was going to be there for three days, and I said to myself, I'm not going to allow Johnny to terrorize me. Yeah. So the kids came to school, and then they sat in my class, and I said, who is Johnny? He raised up his hand and said, Johnny, you're going to be the, my monitor, the class monitor for this whole class. <laughs> I've been told that you are the best kid in this class, and the rest of them started laughing. I'm sure Johnny himself was shocked. <laughs> oh, and Johnny was so happy. Yeah. Johnny became somebody... After the kids leave, you will come and say, be careful about that boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, now Johnny's your side. <laughs> <laughs> so I did that for some time and then became a full-time teacher. Mm, yeah. Now, yes. yours is a fascinating story. I mean, a cuckoo farmer's son mm. became a basket weaver mm. at a point, mm. land economist, mm. turned security guard, mm. now an educationist, mm. turned politician. Mm. How did this happen? I mean, Nobody has said. analyzed it and broken it down at this point. I mean, basically, that is your life. <laughs> that, that, that is you. Yes. I mean, yeah, you, you've spelled out all the chapters of my exactly. book. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but uh, well, how easy or how difficult yeah. was it for you going into politics? Is, is this something you had always wanted to do? Interestingly, uh, I, have, I had always, when I was a kid, I saw posters of politicians and I was, always felt like, wow, this is very interesting. You mm. see there are posters on the wall and, mm -hmm. um, and I said, hmm. Politics is interesting. At, when I started teaching, I had mapped out my career going forward. Mm. I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to be a school administrator, a principal. And then after the principalship, I wanted to move into 
our policies. And yeah. everything was falling in oh, place. Oh, yeah, yeah, everything was falling in place. I knew I was going to teach for um, 10 years. 10 years came, opportunity came for me to be a school administrator and build schools, and I was going to do that for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And after that, I was going to move into politics. But in fact, I was thinking more American politics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was very much part of the, the political system and contributing to Obama's campaign and all those things. I, I'm a political junkie. Can mm. sit in front of TV, watch politics, get me excited. I remember Bush the second, his campaign, I was going to meetings. Mm. That was when I became like a Republican, and then I yeah. switched back. <laughs> <laughs> but the interesting yeah. thing was that I was not thinking Ghanaian politics. Mm. No. I was thinking American, American politics. politics. I wanted to naturalize and become a politician. And it made like sense. You had yeah. lived there. You I had lived there businesses. 20 plus years. Yeah. The they business. loved me. You had no plan of coming back home. No, no I had plans of supporting. Okay. But coming to stay mm. was not in the, in the works for me. And I'm sure you were making good money. Oh, good money. I can tell you, <laughs> if you make, look at the American income per year, mm -hmm. I was top 5% of the country in terms Whoa. of annual Whoa. income. Then you so, are rich. Yeah. What happened to you? What I mean, to me? why did you decide to leave all this and come back to Jache Pram? So come back to Accra, come back to Ghana. Why? Interesting. Um, I had 200 workers. Wow. Um, in America? In America. And I had a wonderful time interviewing Americans to come and work for me. There are times when I have to pinch myself and say, is this the <laughs> <not editum>? <laughs> Am I dreaming? No. When a white mm. person sits at the other end of the table, yeah. being interviewed and asking me, can you please hire me? I'll work for you. So it is education that took me to America. Yeah. It is education that made me who I was. It's education that brought me back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because when Anado Danko Kufado visited one of my schools when he was running for president the second mm -hmm. time, and, uh, came to the school, and then um, I was introduced. There were a whole lot of people there, including senior minister, a whole lot of, who, that mm. came with him. And then he asked me, how were we able to do this? Mm -hmm. How did the Ghanaian come to America and build schools for Americans? Mm -hmm. And then I said, now, now I'll talk to you later. And said, no, 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 <laughs> say it in front of everyone. Say it in front of everyone. I didn't know what he was going to say after that. So I explained the process to him. I became a teacher and a school developer, principal, CEO. And then after I finished, he said, would you consider coming back to help me change the education system? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I will consider. And I took it seriously. I had a meeting with my mentor. Mm -hmm. After that, a former congressman whose seat I wanted to run for. Mm -hmm. And then we had lunch. I invited him to lunch. We went to Sizzlers, a very uh, one lunch joint. And I asked him, Somebody's running for president in Ghana. He wants me to come and help him change the education system mm. and implement free senior high school. Um, and then you also know that I want to be in America and become a politician, politician. and just like you. And then before I could end the sentence, he said, Yao, we appreciate the work you've done here. Your school is one of the best in the state of California. But I'll tell you one thing. America can do without you. But maybe mm. your country cannot do without you. Wow. So go. Wow. wow. Didn't that that must have anything. hit you real no, hard. No, no. He spoke to my heart. Yes. Yeah. I mean, straight in. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't ask him any question. We just talked about something else. Mm. I was fully convinced. His word yeah. has transformed whatever I was thinking. Mm. And I went home, spoke with my wife, and said, um, after speaking with Dr. Mervyn Daimley, Honorable Mervyn Daimley, I mm. think we need to go back mm. to Ghana. A lot of people came to me and said, you are going to be frustrated in Ghana. Have wow. you been frustrated? <laughs> no. Are you kidding me? No. Hmm. How? I'm, excited. I'm the most exciting person, politician probably in this country. Wow. Maybe you should share wow. something oh, yeah, we yeah. don't know with us. Politics is fun. Really? I tell you, well, that's the not most story rewarding we job you can <laughs> ever have in your life. Mm. How do you see politics in Ghana? Great opportunity for transformation of our great nation. So, so whose idea mm -hmm. is double track Let in me Ghana? Say, of course, the president owns everything because mm -hmm. he took a chance. But he called you in he, to come he, and he, help. He, he called me in to come and help. But you see, if you look at double track within the context of leapfrogging, mm -hmm. the idea <laughs> of 
a senior free senior high school was of course the president's idea and the double track and the double track the double track i had taught in it okay mm -hmm. i had taught in double track yeah uh -huh. so of course you suggested it to the of president course, i suggested yeah. to my minister it went to the president but initially how did it sound to your minister yeah no, no. You see, my minister is someone who is open to ideas. Okay. Right. So, so he said, okay, given the situation, this will work. Mm. So my minister embraced it. And let me tell you, if he had not embraced it, he couldn't have gotten to the press. Yeah. Yeah. The minister embraced it and saw that given the situation we were in, that is something that will save the situation. And last Friday, complimentary education agency bill was passed which is going to create a space for 35 and 40 year olds to go to school mm. oh, okay. and, and become electrician, become talent, become teachers, become nurses. Mm. And this is something that's a watershed moment for this country. So when we talk about free senior high school for the youth, we're also talking about transformative education for the adults. Yeah. So you can lift up the bottom and give people hope. And for, for just that, I'm happy to say, um, my coming back has been fruitful and has wow. been useful. As a person, <laughs> As a how person, do you unwind? How do you relax? Unwind. <laughs> uh, write. Read. Uh -huh. I love reading. Mm. Any book by Malcolm Gladwell, read it. Okay. And I can't wait to see his next book. The David last book was, Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. David and Goliath. Ah, you are Malcolm Gladwell. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Oh, boy, boy, boy. <laughs> what a yeah. dog saw. I'm reading it over. Okay. Allies, I'm mm -hmm. reading. Yes. Um, the last one was uh, talking to strangers. Mm -hmm. um, you see, it's, it's open your minds to life's intricacies, how people succeed, how people don't. And by the way, if you look at Napoleon Hill, mm -hmm. um, saying that there's nothing that man has desired or a woman has desired so badly and had not gotten it. Mm, that the course. power is here. Yeah. And if you want to change this country and believe in the fact that the country can be changed, and the vast majority believe that this country can be changed, mm -hmm. Ghana will change. You love mm. music? Of course. What kind of music do you listen to? Gospel and, and, and high life. Mm -hmm. I do gospel. Um, I also do high life. Local right. gospel, foreign local gospel? gospel. Uh, actually, local gospel. Okay, okay. so who Diana are your favorites? Hamilton, Diana Okay. Hamilton. Yeah. yeah, he's my <laughs> Adam is my You favorite can sing one. a line of Adam. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't don't, don't, push, me, don't get, push me in the trouble. <laughs> no, 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 no. I can't. No, 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 no. I can't sing Adam line. But it's a recite. I love um, every one of her songs. Mm. Mm. It's uplifting. Yeah. And she's very professional in terms of her mm. music yeah. and everything about her. Yeah. The only thing is that she, when you watch her video, her clothes, this different one is one. And you want to say, oh, can you wear just two for me? No, she's got it. She's it. I mean, please enjoy so, so it. So it's almost like a fashion show. Yeah. It's just part of it. You know, the others who are also watching the video because well, of what she's doing. So you have yeah. to get everything. Yeah. You know, we are, we are checking yeah. out yeah. the style. She has to keep everyone in that one video. Yeah, so, so, yes, I was watching Abdul, right? Yeah. I said, yeah, you have beautiful clothes, but can you do two instead of five? No, we like it. We like it. We love to see it. And your favorite uh, highlight? Uh, that is number. What's yeah. your favorite Daddy Lumba song? Um, so many of them. So many so of them. So like some two, three? Um, uh, ooh, there are too many. I can't even if think of most of them. Wall, yeah. um, top three. If you're pushed to the wall, top three. No, I, I won't allow myself to be pushed <laughs> to the wall. Because we are ready. <laughs> if you were to mention some of the songs, yeah. Right. <laughs> so men say that. Yeah, men say that. It's not bad. Yeah. You're in Tiobia. Uh-uh, that one. Why, sometimes why? sometimes why it will be a... <laughs> <laughs> Remember there's a kid who, during the primary, I always wanted to teach uh, in mm. the classroom. So during the primary, I went and taught in a school in Feyase. Oh, okay. Went there in my constituency. And then there was this kid who was answering all my questions. So I came and said, hey, young man, um, how are you? And I asked the teachers about him, uh, Emmanuel, and, and then they said, oh, this child is struggling. Look at his uniform, things are not good. So I adopted him, mm. not formally, but, and he was in junior high school too, so I bought him clothes from US shoes and other things. And today he's going to second year of medical school. Wow. At UDS, wow. yeah, and that time school was not free, so I paid. Mm -hmm. and, and now he's uh, going to second year of medical school. Wow. And the family is happy because we've made an impact. Of course. With their collective right. effort. So when you're excited about things like that, I think that's what keeps me going when I remember that 
interestingly, there's another kid called Emmanuel. I don't know me and Emmanuel. Mm. Then that one, it was I think it was divine providence for her. Yeah, I was yeah. passing by through Kurasi, a village in Tepa on the mm. Tepa Road. I was going to the funeral of uh, Tepa Mahne's father, and then something clearly told me that I should go to that house. There's a kid I need to take care of. Wow! wow. Do you pray often? Oh yes, of course. Mm. Okay. Daily. So, so, so you think sometimes God speaks to oh, you? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, I think for that um, f that particular instance, maybe the mother had been praying. Mm. Yeah. So it had nothing to do with my prayers, but. Uh, the mother had been praying. So you were the vessel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I told my bodyguard and other people that we need to go to that house. Very bad. Um, the, if you look at the building, mm. mad built. Mm. And we went in there, coming from the funeral, it was raining. But I said, we lost our way. I said, no, we still have to go to that house. Wow. So finally we found the house. We went there and the whole compound, ragged, um, bad place. And... Um, and I asked the kids, oh, what are you doing? The only children there, pounding mm. fufu and that. And so I said, hey, how are you? How are you? And, and they couldn't say, who is this? Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, a woman walks in, uh, coming out of the market or something. So we said, mom, do you have a child uh, who is at school going age? And they said, yeah, yeah, Emanuela. And then Emanuela came from the bedroom, wow. just loved this young, uh, beautiful woman. And, and then he said, oh, he's in primary six. And... Uh, things are difficult for him. I said, okay, I'm going to adopt her. He said, what? I'm going to adopt her. Wow. So the next day I sent my research assistant there. And when she went there, they were at church praying because they thought I wouldn't come back. Mm. Oh. <laughs> wow. wow. So I adopted wow. Emanuela. Now she's in a boarding school in Kumase. Before the COVID-19, she was in a boarding school. Junior had her own head to be in boarding yeah. school. Mm. And I bring her to Accra. And um, I want Emanuela's storyline to be different. Um, she said she wants to be a nurse, and I said, you be a medical doctor. I love nurses, yeah, but you wow. be a medical doctor. If <laughs> yeah. I'm going to support you. Uh -huh. I walk into library in Accra, and I saw a group of kids there. They happened to come from the Independent Avenue. Mm. I fell in love with them. I adopted their class, <coughs> bought them books, worked with them, paid for vacation classes for them. They've graduated this year from junior high, and I hope they'll go to talk. Mm. Our senior high school. Interesting no, stuff I'm, there. But time will not allow us to tell Of course. I'm sure we can just sit here all day to listen to you and to talk to you. Mm -hmm. You are such a fantastic human being. Yeah. And I'm excited, you know, mm -hmm. about having this conversation because we've had to know you beyond what we see in the news yeah. and all. And the passion you have, the commitment that you have to um, ensuring that Ghanaian children are transformed. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's the only way that we can transform exactly. our nation. Thank you very much for deciding to come back to Ghana mm -hmm. to help. We say a big thank you to your family as well yeah. for giving you to, to us. us. <laughs> and you know, like that Lumba will say, Honorable Won say that. Won say that. Won say that. We've been talking to the Deputy Minister of Education, the Honorable Dr. Yao Ose Edwichum, who is also the Member of Parliament mm -hmm. for Busumche in the Ashanti region. Thank you very much. This has been the Upside Down Show, proudly brought to you by Vodafone Ghana. The future indeed is exciting.